Hare Krishna, this is Krishna Indu Das here from Successful Vaishnavas. And today I'd like to talk about a topic um, that I've been thinking about lately. And that's the idea that um, you know devotees shouldn't do business with other devotees. So what do you think about that idea? I mean, what's your experience? Have you had a good experience working with devotees or have you had problems? Um, the argument basically is that we don't want to affect our relationships with devotees and if we do business with them, then, um, and something goes wrong or we have any problems, it can affect our relationship and, you know, that's obviously not good. So I'm not sure if I um, really accept that argument. I think it's, it's quite sad actually if um, that's the perception that devotees are not mature enough to be able to do business together. And I think as a society it's really important that we, you know, that we establish a, you know, economic basis and that we learn to do business together. Uh, we can see, uh, we've been discussing a little bit lately about some other uh, religious groups such as the Jewish community, the Mormons, you know, I think there's many others as well. I mean even to the extent of the Amish community and uh, I think probably Jehovah Witnesses as well. And in general the principle is that if someone shares a religious belief or if they share common values it makes sense to work together um, and do our business together. I was thinking about it from one point of view as well. We might think that uh, we might have the perception that you know, our society is young and the devotees may not be so great at everything, uh, which I'm not sure is always true. But it's a little bit like my son. Um, he's young, um, but he's got a developing talent for uh, art and music. So I was thinking that, well, perhaps I could uh, engage him, you know, in my business, um, doing artwork. You know, so in the beginning it might be a little bit immature or whatever, um, but it's a way of helping to develop his skills, helping him to um, to grow and become, you know, a better artist and become involved from the beginning. And I think in our society we could think of it like that as well. That even though maybe. Um, some of the devotees that come may not have um, so many skills. It gives a chance for devotees to um, develop their skills and become more um, empowered in the things that they do. But I think even more deeply, I think the mentality is not quite right because as a society, one of our most important points is association. And if we can't learn to work together, uh, that's, that's not a very good sign. Um, so even if it might be difficult, even if we do have challenges and we find that, you know, we do have, um, maybe something goes wrong in the business and it, it creates a challenge in that relationship, well that's an opportunity to actually test the strength and the depth of our relationship. Um, you know, when, when times are rosy, fair weather friends, you know, it's easy to be friends when, you know, we're just... Um, seeing each other very casually from a distance, but if we actually work together, it requires another level of um, friendship. You know, I've worked with devotees before, and I have to say actually that most of the time it's been a really great experience. Naturally, there'll be a few, you know, disagreements or whatever, but because the depth of our relationship is so strong, it's not threatened by, um, you know, challenges that we might face you know, in business. You know, if somebody is, you know, cheating someone else, that's another story. Um, and I guess, you know, in the material world, those types of things are likely to happen as well. Um, but as a society, we have to develop this um, feature of our movement, where we're actually working together to build an economic basis. And I think just another um, perspective on this, which concerns me a lot as well, is the tendency um, for some devotees to like look down on um, anyone that's a devotee and have an assumption that oh, you know, if they're a devotee, if they're a member of ISKCON, you know, they're Hare Krishna, then automatically they can't be as good as you know the people out in the world, you know, the basic materialists or people in other religions, you know. And I think that's um, you know, I really I don't like that attitude. I think that just presenting that um, sort of philosophy or that point of view as if it's a fact is quite harmful 
um, for our society, there's this principle of affirmations, um, where if I talk about myself in a certain way, I tend to act in that way. You know, like if I'm saying to myself, oh, I'm so useless, I'm no good at that, oh, you know, my identity is like, I'm no good at business, or I'm a hopeless artist, or I'm not a good musician, or oh, I never can get up in the morning. You know, we put these limiting beliefs on ourselves. If we say them over and over again, we can tend to believe them as if they are actually part of our identity. And I think that um, we can do the same thing in our society as well, that if we say, oh, devotees are like this, devotees are like that, devotees treat each other really badly, devotees are not good at doing business together, you know, we should just keep a distance from devotees because, you know, devotees are somehow inferior to other people. Hey, look. The reality is that devotees are people, just like anyone else. And the basic principles that apply um, for human beings also apply you know, for Hare Krishna devotees. And I think it's really unfair to um, lump together all devotees and say, oh, all devotees are you know, not good at relationships, or all devotees are not good at um, you know, business, or all devotees are not professional. You know, this is not true. There's some amazing devotees in our movement with great talents, that are very professional, that are very skilled, and that are doing wonderful things. I mean, one um, that comes to mind straight away would be Tulsi Gabbard. You know, people are talking about her that she's potentially a, a future president of the United States. Um, you know, she's very professional and expert at what she does. Um, you know, and there's many other cases of devotees that are very expert in the things that they do. So I think um, this is one concern that I have is. You know, let's, let's be positive about um, our society and see what we can do to improve it rather than kind of like writing it off and emphasizing the negative side. Um, I, I know I've done it in the past and, I, and I'm just reflecting back how it wasn't really helpful or encouraging. And looking at Srila Prabhupada's example, we can see that he was always encouraging with the devotees. You know, if anybody knew the faults of our society, it was Srila Prabhupada. And you know, if you think about those times that the devotees that joined were mostly hippies, they had no background at all. There was nobody coming, you know, from a cultured, you know, sort of, um, you know, Indian background, you know. It was all totally brand new devotees, you know, coming from background of all the four regulative principles being broken. You know, this is hippie life and this is how most of the devotees, where they're coming from. But Prabhupada didn't... Um, and because of that, you know, there were problems. You know, there was devotees that um, were doing kind of weird things, and there's all kinds of problems in the society. But you won't see in Prabhupada's letters, or um, certainly in his lectures and in his public speaking, that he's um, talking about how, oh, my devotees are so useless, you know, they're all a bunch of hippies, and, and they're having so many problems. No, he was so positive. He was like, wow, these devotees that have joined. I'm so grateful for them. My spiritual master has sent them. They are representing my spiritual master. And even though they've come from these backgrounds which are doing all the, you know, um, sinful activities, now they've become pure devotees. And they've dedicated their lives fully to serving Krishna. And, um, you know, they've gone from being hippies to being happies. And, um, you know, they're doing amazing things that they're going out and opening centers, and living a very austere life, you know, on behalf of Krishna. Um, an example recently is where uh, Indra Jumna Maharaj was reading this one um, at the Sacred Sound Festival uh, in Yugovaran, where Prabhupada was writing to Prabhu Vishnu, um, Prabhu, and he was saying that, you know, I can see that you have fully dedicated yourself to, you know, serving Krishna. That you're traveling in a van in very cold weather. But you're not seeing it as a difficulty because you have, you're, you know, I'm not giving the exact words, but this is the gist of it. <laughs> um, you've devoted your life to serving Krishna, and even though there's so many um, austerities that you're engaged in, you're not seeing it as austerity, and you're taking up this mission with so much enthusiasm. You know, and this is the mood that Srila Prabhupada had. He was so encouraging. So I think that um, in our society, there's a few things that we, we can, that would be really helpful is that we encourage each other and instead of trying to find the faults, you know, like the bee, uh, the fly, sorry, we should become more like the bee. Let's look out for 
devotees that are being successes and point at them and say, hey, just look, you see the devotees? Devotees are really successful people, right? Instead of, you know, pointing out the things that are going wrong, let's look for uh, successful examples. You know, and that's why I started the Successful Vaishnavas podcast, is to highlight the successful devotees. Devotees are doing something successful. Now, those devotees may not be perfect in every respect of their whole life, you know, no doubt. But, um, excuse me, <laughs> but the fact that, um, you know, are successful in one thing, we should, we should look at that side of it and emphasize that, just as Srila Prabhupada did. Um, so I think this will make a big difference if we focus on the positive side of things. And then on the other um, side of it, in terms of, you know, should we do devotees, uh, business with devotees, I think it's really important that we make a conscious effort to um, actually get together and deliberately see how can we work with devotees. Because it's only when we um, practice uh, doing things together, such as business or other projects, that we will be able to really develop our society and make it the powerful society that it can be. So my observation is that there's, there's really great projects going all, all over the place, but they're all very individualistic in the sense that um, you know, in one country somebody might be doing uh, a really interesting project. In another country, someone else might be doing something a little bit similar. But there's no communication um, between the devotees, which would just make it that much more powerful. You know, just imagine, um, as a, like for example, a preacher. Someone's going out and trying to preach in America, in a city, and trying some different approaches. And then he shares with someone here in Auckland and says, hey, this is what I'm doing, and I've found some quite good success doing this. And then um, he might say, oh, but I've tried this over th other thing over here, but I know it doesn't seem to work. And then the devotee in Auckland says, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I tried that as well, and it wasn't successful. But then I just tried this one little change, and um, we were able to, you know, actually the results changed. So in this way, you know, sharing between devotees, like, hey, I'm trying this, and I'm not sure if it's going to be successful, but hey, I'll keep you all posted about how it goes on. You know, this spirit of collaboration um, is the, a way that we can, you know, come together, even if it's, you know, um, virtually, and support each other to be more successful and more professional. I mean, this is what professional societies do. You know, if you're an accountant, you become a member of the Society of Accountants, um, for example. And um, it's through that collective um, collaboration that you can really you know, achieve great things. So I think I'll wrap it up um, here. It's my little rant for the day. I think I've covered the main points that I wanted to cover, which is basically, you know, um, if someone says don't do business with devotees,